Hey, welcome to the Airmy Roundtable. Today is 18th of May, 2021. So welcome. We have our special guest, Amy Meisner, with us. Uh, Amy's a longtime uh, um, expert with Aramir, having done multiple trade alert services. And this is the first time you're going to bring the time zone trade to us. So um, welcome, Amy. We're all looking forward to the time zone trade. Great. Yeah, no, so I, I, a lot of people have been asking about it, so I'm real excited to um, give them what they want. <laughs> so, <laughs> so to speak. All right. Um, should I just get going here, or that's it? Um, yeah, I can just okay. read this part okay. if you want. Uh, you, yeah, you can go ahead and do that. Yeah, so Aramir uh, Corporation and Amy Meisner are not broker-dealers or investment advisors. It's for educational purposes only. Options, futures, currencies, every, everything involves risks. So uh, um, prior to buying or selling, and to check with your uh, characteristics and risks of standardized options. Past performance is not indicative of future results. It's for educational purposes only. And uh, if you want to read the whole thing, go to our website or just pause this video and watch the, uh, you know, read the whole whole slide. So there you go. All right. All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, glad to be here showing this um, trade and uh, appreciate you all um, being able to join live for those that can join live and for those who are watching the recording. Thanks for watching. Um, all right. So today I'm going to talk about the time zone option strategy. It's a strategy that I came up with not too long ago, like, I don't know, maybe a couple years ago or something. Um, just working on a lot of short-term weekly type strategies. And I wanted to, um, you know, playing around with different, different um, combinations of things. I like to keep things simple. So it's a simple trade, but I kind of came across this and I did a lot of testing and I really liked it. I did a, um, a video course at SMB for it and it's been really popular there. And it actually did really well during all the volatility that we had in 2020. Um, which was uh, not super surprising, but I didn't expect it to do, at, I thought it would do well, but I didn't expect it to do like, you know, double what I thought, it, you know, what, what the um, uh, lower volatility uh, did. So it was actually turned out to be a really nice trade during that time. And it's continued to do really, really well. So, so for today's presentation, I'm going to talk about the strategy itself, um, its performance over the years. Uh, I back tested it all the way back to the mid 2016 in the RUT, which is when weekly options were really starting to be traded and more liquid in the RUT. I didn't want to go back further than that because then it's just not real, very realistic. Um, and then, of course, we're going to go through some trade examples, um, recent trade examples, because uh, obviously those are the ones that are most uh, likely to happen, including last week. We had a pretty big drop in the RUT in the mar overall market, on all the markets, pretty much. Uh, last week. And um, so I'm going to show you a trade that actually went through that. It was actually a profitable trade. So, uh, you know, because partially because of that uh, positive vega uh, that we're going to talk about as well. And then, of course, um, I'm introducing this because I'm going to start a new uh, time zone alert service, which is starting. Uh, then the start date will be next week. So we'll go over all that as well. Okay. So for those who don't know me, just a little bit about me first. Uh, I began trading stocks and options in uh, the mid-90s, and I became a full-time trader in 2006. I specialize in high-probability option strategies, so I want things to be, you know, lots of lots of winners. I like those. Uh, my goal has always been to make a monthly income and consist having them, you know, come in consistently during a variety of market environments. So I like neutral trades. I don't want to try to guess which direction the market's going to go in. And I tend to uh, work in... Um, design strategies that don't require me to sit in front of a computer all day. I like to spend a lot of time outdoors. I live in Southern California. It's sunny here most of the time, so I'm not really one to want to sit in front of my computer all day, so I tend to create strategies that don't require that. Um, done a lot of speaking engagements and presentations for numerous trading clubs and educational trading services, such, of course, as Aramir. I've done a lot of trade alert services here and workshops, as well as video courses, so including the time zone. All right, so what is the time zone? And I'll keep an eye, just so you know, I'll keep an eye out for questions and things like that. I'm sure Tom will as well. So the time zone is basically a strategy that was designed to create steady profits on a consistent basis, but not having to be in the market too much. So I'm basically, while being in the market for as little time as possible, um, as little as, you know, keep it, you know, only being in the market for one week a month. Um, so it's great for, um, you know, people that maybe 
uh, just want to trade here and there, you know, you can make it as your, your one of your main strategies, or it could be like an additional strategy that you trade every once in a while. Um, if you're you know busy or working on other strategies, so it could be it's very flexible. You can trade it every week. You can trade it once a month. You can just trade it on weeks that you feel like trading it. So, but it has that. Um, it's, it's pretty consistent. So we'll go through that. So it's a short-term market neutral strategy. It has positive Vega as as well as positive theta. So a lot of positive theta trades uh, tend to be negative Vega because we're taking in a premium. This particular strategy actually has positive theta, but it also has positive Vega. So it kind of mitigates a lot of that risk where you have a big volatility spike um, that could actually benefit um, in a lot of cases with this trade. Um, it's a high probability trade. It has a very high win rate um, and it has high potential returns, even just trading it like once a week, which we'll go over again. Um, low drawdowns, drawdowns are kept pretty low and it's really simple. It's got a really simple setup. It's made up of a couple of spreads and I like to keep the risk management um, style of this trade very simple as well. So there's nothing too fancy going on here. Um, some of that, uh, more advantages for this is it's great for small accounts. So I like to trade um, two lots and for a two lot trade, um, you, can be, you can be in the trade for as little as seven to $10,000. It you know it depends on the volatility. So the higher the volatility, the the more expensive it um, some of the options are. Uh, so the the margin goes up a little bit, and the lower the volatility, the lower um, the premium is. So um, on the ones that you're buying, so the margin goes down a little bit. So so somewhere between seven and ten thousand dollars. I'll keep these in the in the class under ten, and that's for a two lot. But you can trade it as a one lot if you want to. If you have even a smaller account. Um, but I like a two lot. I like the flexibility of a two lot because I can do a little bit more with the adjustments on that. Not that I do a lot of adjustments. I keep those to a minimum in this trade. Um, it's very easily scalable. Uh, obviously, it's traded in uh, mainly in the Russell 2000. It can be traded in the SPX as well, which I'll be talking about in the service. And um, you know, because those are very liquid indices with lots of weekly, um, uh, you have lot, you know, plenty of weekly cycles. And they're highly liquid, so you can scale this up pretty pretty big if if it's a, a trade that you want to do as one of your main trades. You know, obviously that's up to you and what your risk profile is and what what kind of you know your own uh, goals and things like that are with your trading. Um, it's very very short term, so the average time in the trade is only five days, which I know a lot of you guys. Uh, like now a lot of these weekly trades where you're just kind of in and out and you collect your premium and you're not having to wait for a whole month um, or two months for the trade to uh, bring in the profits. Um, so basically it, it gives you the potential to have a high return even by being in the market for as little as one week per month because of this, um, which, you know, that helps to avoid a lot of the ups and downs that the market has. So even though you're going, might be going through a volatile period, if you're only in the, in the market as little as one week per month, um, then you could, you know, be out of the market basically 75, 80, you know, sometimes 90% of the time. So you do miss a lot of those ups and downs that are happening. And that, you know, um, by avoiding that, um, it actually is a benefit. Um, and it also, um, you can trade this, without having to overlap trades. So you don't have to, you can trade it every week because there are weekly um, cycles every week, um, but you don't have to, and you don't. that means that you don't have to have additional margin by overlapping trades, and you can even trade it twice a month, which is the preferred way I like to do it. And of course that keeps the, the margin low by not having to overlap. Um, additional advantages, there's no need to pick direction. This is a neutral strategy. I put it on in a neutral stance. So you don't have to be a technical analysis to, you know, figure out, you know, which way the direction the market's going to go and, and should I put on a trade this week, that kind of thing. Um, you don't need to sit in front of your computer all day. Uh, you can just set alerts um, or conditional orders if you'd like to use those. Um, and so adjustments are really simple. The setup and the adjustments are really simple. Like I said, we're always just, I'm just doing spreads. Um, and then, on, you know, beyond that for adjustments, it's just rolling a strike up or down, that kind of thing. Uh, so I can keep the strikes clean. I don't want to have a million different pieces to close at the end of the trade. Uh, the plan capital for this, for a two lot, is anywhere from seven to $10,000. Uh, so the minimum account size is about $10,000. Uh, 
Um, in higher volatility, it could go above that, but generally um, I'll be keeping these under 10,000 10, for the class, even with a two lot trade. The profit target is 5% or more. Um, and like I said, usually the trades are on for only about you know five days to average, usually less um, in a lot of cases. And I like to keep the max loss around 5%. So I don't really wanna be um, having larger losses than that. And the win loss expectancy is about nine to three or 75% or, or higher. It's got a pretty good win rate. And as I mentioned earlier, you know, it has that really high return potential um, for such a short term trade. You know, the average, you're only in the trade for five days um, per trade, and it can be traded once or twice per month without having to overlap, overlap trades. Of course, it could be traded every week as well, but without having to overlap trades and use more margin, you can trade it once or twice a month. And it still has a high return potential, even if it's only traded once per month, uh, which allows you to avoid the you know, ups and downs of the market more than 75, 80% of the time by doing it just once a month. So as um, some uh, uh, performance metrics here, I did, you know, when I was testing this out, when I first started this trade, um, I, I, you know, did a lot of different iterations and came up with, you know, a rule set and um, went back to mid 2016, which was when uh, trading this in the Russell 2000, which was about when the weeklies in the Russell 2000 became more um, normal, regular, I should say, and had more liquidity. So before that, the Russell was trading weeklies, but it wasn't as um, consistent and the liquidity wasn't quite there. So I went back as far as when I knew the liquidity was high enough. Um, so I can get some you know, real results. And this is the results of going back all the way to mid 2016 through uh, 2019, most of 2019, not all of 2019. Um, and uh, at the time I did these tests, and as you can see here, trading it twice a month, um, that's about a three year period, only 60. So there was a total of 66 trades and the net profit um, starting with a $7,000 account was 14,000. So you know, basically tripled the account a little bit more than that. Um, there was 83% were winners, 17% were losers. Um, the average um, winning trade was $295 for a, a two lot. Um, the largest was $847, but you can see the, the largest and the, the average um, drawdown was 127 and the largest you know, loss was $325. So uh, by keeping those as small as possible can really, that's why you're seeing this graph, you know, really um, do very well. The average days in the trade, um, overall winners and losers were about five, a little bit longer for the winners and a little bit shorter for the losers. Um, the maximum consecutive winners, about 14 during this time, and the maximum consecutive losers have been about two. And that's, I've seen that on a regular basis that it's usually not getting more than two max consecutive losers. And in this case, like I said, you can avoid a lot of the ups and downs in the market because you're not in the market for very long. So here I'm trading it every, you know, like twice a month. And I'm only in the market for 421 days out of three years. So out of about a thousand days, I'm only in for 421, so I'm, I'm out of the market, you know, 60% of the time, I'm not even in the market, even trading it twice a month. Um, and even trading it just once a month, it's a little more, uh, you know, not quite as smooth of a graph, but even just trading it once a month, uh, 33 trades during the same amount of time, almost doubling the account during that time. Um, again, you know, the metrics are, are pretty high, 76% winners, um, the, uh, the average um, and largest wins are about the same with the same, same thing with the losses or it's about the same. Days in the trade is about the same. Um, and the maximum consecutive wins and losses is, you know, uh, similar-ish. Obviously you have more, more consecutive winners when you have more trades going on, but still the, the maximum consecutive losses, even in this case was two. Um, and the time in the market during that whole time of about a thousand days was only 176 days. So you're really avoiding, a, you know, 80% of a lot of the market ups and downs. Um, but of course that's past and that's, um, you know, uh, of uh, testing and so forth. So obviously what you guys want to see is, well, what about recent? So um, here is going forward 2020 through 2021 year to date. And this includes, this goes all the way up to last week. 
uh, trade. So the beginning of 2020, all the way through uh, last week, uh, total um, year-to-date um, profits, 147%. That was for 35 trades. Uh, out of those 35 trades, uh, oops, I didn't update this. Um, uh, this should be, out of these 35 trades, it should be 29 winning trades and six losing trades. I'm sorry, I missed that. Um, the average winner, about 560. This is for a two lot again. The average loser, about 304. And then, um, you know, there's some outsized ones that average, or the largest winner was over a thousand and the largest loss was still under $400. And still, you know, only two consecutive losing trades and 11 consecutive winning trades. So pretty good stats. And as you can see here, we kind of had a little bit of flat going on. Um, in the beginning of 2020, we had all that volatility, but even starting in March, um, once that volatility kicked in, it was really, you know, kind of going crazy from there. So it did really well, even with all that volatility. So let me just see if there's any questions so far. There's a couple questions here. Oh, questions answered. There you go. Yeah, I just did uh, you back test in 2020 and then you showed this slide. So I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> good. I'm right on it. Um, okay, so you mentioned even when trading two times per month, does that mean it only be traded two? Or, oh, you can trade it weekly if you want, like the boxcar, Steve. Um, as long as there's a weekly, um, you know, as long as there's cycles to trade it in, you can trade it weekly. Um, and of course there are now, you know, cause there's, uh, it's become very popular to, uh, the weekly cycle. So there's always a weekly cycle to trade. So this can be traded every week. You're just going to be, oh, you possibly, if you, you know, you're out of the trade in five days, you, you probably won't be, but there'll be occasion when some of these trades might overlap if you trade it every week. Um, I was just doing it, uh, on average two times a month instead to make sure that there was no overlapping. So for people with small accounts, they can, um, not have to worry about having additional margin, um, but you can trade it, you know, once, twice, three, four times a, a month, whatever, however many weeks are in a month. Um, or you can be somebody that says, I just want to trade it every once in a while as an, as an you know, an additional trade strategy that I, I want to do on occasion. So it's all personal preference. All right. Um, so let's take a look at some examples. Um, and I'm going to, you know, instead of going back and showing you examples of previous, I have lots of presentations out there that do that. Um, I thought it would be, you know, let's take a look at what's going, really going on recently, including last week's market drop, because I know that that's something that's probably on your guys, on your minds. Um, that was a pretty decent drop there in a very short amount of time. Um, uh, and then I'll kind of get back to these questions as I, after I go through these. All right. So. Let's start with trade one. Typical, you know, market tends to move up most of the time. So that's the typical kind of thing you're going to see. So here we are at the start of the trade. Uh, it, it is a really simple profile. It's made up of two spreads. Um, it's a positive, you can see here it's positive theta, but it's also positive vega going in. Um, the deltas are really flat. T plus zero line is pretty flat. Um, and uh, let's, so this was uh, done at the beginning of the year. This one was entered on the 15th of January. So I think it's a Friday. Um, and okay, whoops, let's go back here really quick. So it was entered at uh, the market at the time was 21.15 in the rut. Here we are, we're up 50 points. Uh, you know, definitely needed an adjustment. So an adjustment was made, but you can see here, things kind of remain nice and flat. This is, uh, let's see, that was the 15th. So this is a few days later. So the, uh, the weekend plus a couple days. Um, so you can see here, we're still looking pretty flat, still a lot of theta, the Vega is still positive at this point. Um, and then uh, that's the 20th. And then on the 21st, uh, we pulled back a little bit and um, some, you know, some more theta came in the trade, a little bit of Vega because it was positive Vega. And I was able to get a pretty nice profit really quick. So, you know, being in the trade here, probably maybe five or six days. Uh, yeah, and that includes the weekend, um, a quick profit. All right, so let's go to trade two, another typical market moving up. Here's this time maybe moving up a little bit more because we've seen that a lot lately. And this was, uh, okay, this is February 5th of this year. So here we are, the market's at 2216 for the rut. Again, positive theta, positive vega, flat delta. Um, here we are on the same day. We're already, you know, 
kind of moving up a little bit. So the slight adjustment there. Um, then over the weekend, we're moving up more. So now I think we started the trade at 22.16. We're up uh, 50 points um, on the following, I believe, Monday. So um, here's the trade there. It's still really nice and flat. We still have positive theta and vega. And then on the next day, on the 9th, um, we, you know, we're up about uh, not quite 20 points, but what about 15, 16 points or so, 17 points. And now, you know, theta is really kicking in and uh, we're up about 4.1%, but we're kind of getting over here close to the right side. I could keep it on and kind of float this up a little bit or just take it off for a quick profit. I like taking quick profits, but that's a nice thing about this trade, depending on how you feel about it, you could stay in and get, you know, take much bigger profits um, if you if you like to. Because it wouldn't take much to, to really flatten that out. Um, all right, let's take a look at trade three. Here we go. This is one I'm sure you guys are interested in. This is this is last week. So this is one where it was entered on the 7th of May, which is a Friday. And then we had that that big drop in the market, you know, the following week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, right? So here we are on uh, Friday, um, Friday morning, uh, 22, I think in the morning, 2262. I, I put all these on in the morning to get, you know, that extra weekend theta. Uh, again, positive theta and vega, flat delta. Um, this is on the 7th. Following Monday, we're down, let's see how far are we down. We're down about uh, 2262. So we're down about 45 points. Is that about 45 points? 38, 48, 58. Oh, I'm sorry, 25 points. 20, 25, yeah, 25 points. And, um, you know, trades up, but, you know, it's time to, you know, just make sure that things are going to be okay, kind of flatten out the deltas there, slight adjustment. Uh, we continue to move down. So we're down another, what, 17, 18 points, seven, or 17 points here. So kind of keeping things flat. And then uh, let's just take a look at the end of the day. We're down even further. The market continued to fall. But we're starting to, you know, Vega and Theta are kicking in for us, and the trade is still really flat, and and things are kind of coming in, and everything's looking, you know, good at this point. But as you know, the next day, the next morning, we opened down 50 points, over 50 points. We opened down. Uh, so this is first thing in the morning, on open. I don't like to do anything. I mean, you can't really do much like the first couple of minutes. You can try, but. Prices are bouncing around all over the place. But as you can see here, you know, it's a pretty big move down um, and we're basically flat. So, but I don't really wanna be over on this side of the tent. And I get, again, this is a short-term trades, but I usually, when we do this, I usually wait, you know, 15 minutes or so, uh, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes. You know, see how the market kind of settles in in the morning. A lot of times it'll fade um, before actually putting in my orders to take things out and, you know, with prices bouncing around, on the open, it's usually better to wait just at least a little bit, right? So sure enough, we do get a bit of a fade, fade on that move, at least for the first, you know, 20 minutes or 30 minutes of the day before it starts falling back down. But we're, you know, by, you know, by waiting and just kind of watching things, uh, we're up, even if it was lower than 5%, I'm still kind of on the, you know, unless we kept moving up, I'm still kind of on this part of the tent where I don't really want to be. Um, and, you know, it's up a pretty good amount, target profit close the trade. So that was actually a winning, turned out to be a winning trade, even though we had a pretty big move down. So we went from, let's see, 22.62, um, all the way down to 21.73, actually we went down even lower, and then we came up a little bit, 22.01, um, uh, and we was able to take a profit. And then I'm gonna show one last trade. Sometimes this happens. Um, when, when I get an opportunity to just like be in and out in a day and take a quick exit, sometimes I'll do that, even if it's lower than 5% target, just because it's like, well, that was easy. Um, so here's a trade that, again, this one was on the, this was April, beginning of April of this year. And on a Friday, the following Monday, we're already up over 5%, you know, 
nothing had to be done, no adjustments. Why bother staying in? There might be you know, lots of movement in the market. I'm just gonna take my profits and go. So uh, to kind of dive down a little bit deeper into the um, 2021, so just the 2021 trade. So this is trading twice a month. So every, like basically every other week, uh, depending on how many weeks are in a month. And then trade nine includes uh, May 7th. You can add that to the sales page, Tom. I don't think it was there when I sent you the first thing. So this includes May 7th trade, which was last week. Um, as you can see, they're not going to be all winners. There's a couple losers in here. Here's a you know a couple three percent losers, um, which were I think in March sometime. Uh, but overall, you know, pretty good uh, profit um, for some really short-term trades. So let me see if there's any other questions before I start diving into what's going to happen with the service. Looks like there's a lot of stuff in here. Let's see. Uh, low volatility, which is better. Actually, I love it when this, um, you know, there is a time spread element to this. So usually those do really well in low volatility environments, but I think it does really well in higher volatility environments or, you know, medium, which is where we're at right now. Um, obviously I, I went all the way back and back tested it through, you know, 2016 and later, which a lot of the, those years were super low volatility and it did really well, but 2020, it did even better. When the volatility was higher, so I kind of I kind of like it when the volatility is higher, but um, it does really well in, in both. Um, sometimes when you're transitioning from one to another, it, it, there'll be some bumps along the way, like uh, when the market gets a little chop, like too choppy. Um, but because you're not having to be in the market all the time, um, unless you're trading it every single week, uh, you miss a lot of that stuff. So I think it, it does well in both. Um, uh, we'll talk about the service in a bit. Joy has a question about the service. I'm going to get into that in a minute. Um, and can anyways, uh, the spread is, like I said, it's made up of two spreads. One is a time spread, which is like a calendar or a diagonal. And that's what gives us its positive vega. And the other is, um, you know, a premium spread, like a, you know, credit spread. So two very simple spreads put together in a, in a way that makes, um, uh, the trade very neutral at the beginning. And then I have a, a management, uh, risk management, which of course we'll go over in the service as the trades are progressing. Um, that are really simple adjustments. Um, and I try to keep them minimal. I don't wanna be making a lot of adjustments as a very short-term trade uh, to just kind of capture that theta really quickly. It's, that's the whole point of the trade. Uh, since this is in the rut, we know the rut getting filled is not fun. I haven't had any problems I, don't, I never have any problems getting the rut filled, but I'm going to also be doing this in the SPX. So every week we're going to be talking about a rut and an SPX trade. Um, and I, and I know a lot of people like the SPX better. I think it performs better in the rut and I've never had a problem, but uh, for those that like the SPX, um, we'll be doing that as well. As well. Uh, with stock options, yeah, I, I think, you know, not ones that are like, you know, super trending uh, or, um, you know, have high, too high of a volatility, but you, it, it, it can be traded in stock options or um, ETFs as well. I like the indexes. It's just a better tax. You get a better tax, tax break on trading options in the indices. Um, and, the, and because of the makeup of the indices where you have all these different sectors, you don't have to worry about earnings. You don't have to worry about one sector just doing badly. Um, they kind of balance each other out a little bit, but you know, so I'm going to be concentrating on the indices, RUT and SPX, but it, it can be traded in, in other things as well. Uh, uh, I, I did, Robert mention what the trade is. I said it's made up of two spreads, um, a time spread and a credit spread. Um, you know, all of the details of, you know, what I'm choosing, why I'm choosing it, what the adjustments are going to be is going to be part of the service. Um, but it is made up of those two spreads. So, you know, like I said, a, a calendar or a diagonal tends to be, that's what gives it its, its positive vega. And then you get extra theta coming in from the credit spread. So um, that's how you get your positive theta and your positive vega. Uh, I'm getting a lot of the same thing. I'm, I'm telling you what the trade is, Kevin, Robert, everybody, I'm not sure. Um, this isn't, this round table isn't meant to be a class on all of the rules or, or exact setup of the trade. Um, but like I said, it's a calendar trade with the credit spread. 
Um, you can do it in the calls. I like doing it in the puts. So um, hopefully that helps. Uh, yes, it's part of, you know, part of the service is giving you the education on the trade in more detail, um, following along with the, the trade during today's markets are what's going to, you know, allow you to kind of learn as I'm trading it. Um, and what's the margin per trade is like anywhere from seven to $10,000 for a two lot, Tim. Um, and I already talked about, okay, so I answered all the questions about that. So let's talk about what you're gonna get in the service a little bit more. This is, that's, uh, oops, I forgot to change this as well. There we go. So what you're gonna get, um, obviously the alerts are done in real time for any of the live trades and those are sent out via email and or SMS depending on how your um, preferences are set up. And those are for all opening, adjusting and closing trades. I plan to do a live trade with the real-time alerts twice a month in the Russell 2000 index options. However, um, every week we're going to meet every single week during the service and I'm going to be covering whether it's the live trade that I have on or if there is no live trade because I'm skipping that week, we're going to be covering both a RUT and an SPX trade every week. So even um, when it's not a live trade. So that way you've got to get a better feel for it. Um, and each week the markets do different things most of the time. So that'll kind of give you a better feel for the trade. Um, the uh, start of the service starts next week on Thursday, the 27th of May. Um, and in that I'm gonna do just like I did with the AIC, I'm gonna do a kickoff video, which is gonna give you the guidelines of, you know, not just how to use a service, but how we're gonna set up the trades, what you're gonna see as far as the, or what to expect. Um, uh, how, you know, how everything's going to work. And then um, the weekly live video recaps where we're going to be meeting live. Uh, if, if you can join live where, you know, we're going to be doing the Q&A going over uh, at least two trades every week, a RET and an SPX. One of them will be live um, or every other week, each one of them will be live. So we'll be talking about the live ones. We'll be talking about um, uh, just paper ones so that we do have something to talk about every week. Um, and, you know, we'll go through those step by step. So you have a better understanding of how this trade works and why it's working the way it is. And then of course, you'll have access to everything on the class page as long as you maintain it. Well, it's a one-time subscription. So, you know, obviously you'll have access to everything. So um, that includes like all the videos of the weekly live recaps, the trade messages, trade history, emails, kickoff video, guidelines, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's and not a subscription, just to be clear. It's just one-time payment. Yeah, it's a one-time one thing. Um, and as a bonus, like I mentioned before, I'm going to be talking about covering SPX as well, not just the RUT, because I know a lot of people like the SPX. I think it performs really well in the RUT, so that's why I'm going to concentrate on that um, as my live trades, but I think the SPX should be covered, every, will be covered every week as well. All right, so basically, if you guys are interested in learning about this strategy, you like the weekly stuff, um, it's a really nice weekly trade. Um, you can go to, um, I'm going to copy this. Oh, how do I copy this link? Copy. I'm going to paste this in the chat box. Um, that's where you can go to sign up. Um, it's going to be a one. Why is this? Okay, there we go. It's going to be, uh, it's only going to be offered for a limited time. It's a one payment. It's just like we did the AIC where I just did it for a limited time service. Um, enough time to kind of give you an idea of how the trade works how it's performing live, you know, get you going on it um, in a variety. Hopefully, you know, we'll have a, a plenty of different things going on in the, in the several weeks that we'll be doing it. Um, it's going to be a one-time payment of $297, which is about $100 off. Normally, we do the, these types of things for actually, I think normally they're $499, but I, I put $399. So we're doing like over $100 off of that. So just kind of keeping it the same as, as we did with the AIC, just $297, one-time payment. So you don't have to, you know, commit every single month. And um, you'll be learning, every, like I said, every week with this. It's going to go, I don't think I put that in the slide. I'm sorry. So I'm going to add it right here. Oops. So the start of the service is next week, uh, May 27th, which is, I think, is Thursday. And it's going to go through July 9th. That should give plenty of um, trade opportunities um, just like with the AIC, we had three live trades and 
Uh, we talked about a lot of different trades in between in the weekly meetings. Uh, this that was a monthly trade. This is a weekly trade, so we'll have you know six. Um, we'll have you know probably more than three live ones and um, you know two a RUT and an SPX every week for you know six was it six seven weeks or something like that. So that's how we're going to run this. Um, what and the reason I'm doing it this way, I, it seems to be that and I, I'm I'm going to come back and revisit it just like I'm going to do the AIC again, but. What I've been finding is that most people, you get a lot of everything that you need in the first you know, couple of months. And then after that, it's kind of like rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat until the market kind of changes and then people get interested again in it. So I think what I'm gonna do is, is do it, it. It just seems like you get more out of it that way um, from what I've been hearing um, is to uh, do the service for a while. We really dig down deep. We get, you know, do a lot of different trades. You can ask me questions about different markets. Maybe we can even go back to different um, year. If there's a specific month that you want me to check out or whatever, we can do all that stuff. That's, you know, a lot of different um, trades that we can look at, including, you know, today's market. And then, you know, I'll come back and do it again, you know, maybe six months from now when the market changes and we can, you cover the market then. So it kind of gives a a better um, experience for me. And, um, you know, most people are pretty much done with learning everything that they want to learn from the strategy during that particular market within the first couple of months. So is what I found. Um, so that's why, and it seemed to be pretty successful with the AIC with everybody kind of liking it that way. And I'm going to come back and do that again uh, when the market changes a little bit. So I think, um, uh, that uh, seems to be a good way to do it. Hopefully you guys like that. That's what I've heard from a lot of people. So let me go back and take a look at some other questions here. Uh, thanks for including the SPX. Yeah, definitely. Um, where is, uh, okay, Mar Okay, so I'm going back. Margin, it's like I said, a seven to 10,000 for a two lot, but you can do a one lot, but you're gonna have to change the adjustment style a little bit. And I'll, of course, I'm gonna go over all that in the service. Uh, I don't wanna leave anybody hanging or anything. With a, a lot of you know a lot of different um, you know all the simple basics, but I'm also going to go over a lot of different um, things that you can do. So we're really going to cover a lot. Um, you know, here's a basic adjustment, but you can do this or that, that kind of thing, um, and we'll follow those along so you can see the different effects that different things can have uh, on the trades. Um, uh, if you can trade it in stock options, can you provide a screen to identify candidates? Um, you know what, probably some of the screening for some of the other trades that we do might work. So I'll, I'll, lo I'll look into that, Steve, for sure. Um, you can put it on with a bullish or bearish bias, and we can talk about that as well. And that's just by changing up some of the strikes, uh, where you place the strike. So we can do that as well. Um, uh, would it work on silver or copper ETFs? I'm not familiar with trading those, but um, we can look at a few different ETFs and stocks that you guys are thinking about and just see if it sets up pr properly. So we can do that in the weekly meetings as well. Because, you know, one week we say, hey, let's check it out and see, see how it would look in copper. Um, once you kind of get a feel for how it works in the RUD or the SPX, you'll see um, how you can translate that to other uh, stocks or ETFs as well. Um, it's actually not for three months. It's actually for uh, less than that because it's a, uh, when I did the AIC, the AIC is a 30 day trade. You basically, you start off with 45 to or 40 to 50 days to expiration, but most of the trades are only on for 30 days. So I wanted to make sure I did at least three live trades, which is why I did it for three months. And then every week we kind of talked about different things. This is a weekly trade. So it's on, you can put one on every week, which we will talk about every week. Um, so you'll have plenty of week, you'll have plenty of live trades even in a shorter amount of time. And we'll talk about every week, we're gonna talk about multiple trades as well. So uh, let's see. So to clarify, if we do the trade every week, we will set up our non-live trades ourselves. No, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll work on them together as far as, uh, so every week, I think I'm gonna do the, um, you'll have to, yeah, you'll have to make your, if you, do, if you decide to trade them live, you'll have to trade them live on your own because I'm not gonna be sending out real-time alerts, but, um, I'm going to be doing the um, weekly meetings on Thursdays after the market closes. I like to trade these. These like I like to trade these trades. I mean, they can be tr set up on Thursday 
usually Thursday in, in lower volatility markets, I like to end, I like to enter them on Thursday later in the day. But in these markets right now, I prefer to enter them on Friday. So the trades will be entered on Fridays. So we're going to be talking about like what would a trade setup look like for the following day and how to set that up. Um, and then the following Thursday, we're going to be talking about how it followed through step by step. So you kind of get an idea. So those are the ones that are just going to be paper traded. And then, of course, the ones that are live, I'm going to be sending out alerts during real time market hours, exactly when things happen. Um, let's see, would you be open to doing live trading? Uh, it, I'm not going to do it. The reason why I'm not going to do a live trade every week is because uh, I don't want to have anything overlapping. So it gets kind of confusing when things overlap. Um, and I know that the boxcar is being done every week in the SPX. So I don't want to have anything confusing. Uh, and that's happened to me a lot in some of the other services that I did with short, short trades. And then people get confused, well, which trade are you talking about? Even though it might say, you know, the trade ID or whatever. Um, and for, so for people that are newer or I don't want to have any chance of that kind of mucking things up and getting things confusing for, for those that are, you know, not as familiar with um, trading multiple trades overlapping, having to have extra margin, that kind of thing. That's why I decided to do that. So it's not because I don't want to, it's just because I don't want to have anything overlapping. Um, but I do want to make sure that we do cover them every week. So I think that that's going to, um, you know, that's going to be a good education there. Uh, when the trade is established, do you use conditional orders for the adjustment? You can. The first two adjustments or the first adjustment on the upside and the first adjustment on the downside is pretty basic. Um, almost the same every time. Um, I prefer because it's such a short term and I don't want, you know, if the market's kind of banging around a little bit, I prefer to just use alerts, but you can do that. I, I prefer them on the, um, you know, the first upside and the first downside adjustment, but they, but you can use them. Um, let's see. And oh, here's a great question. I didn't answer that. So thanks for bringing this up, Jeff. Um, how frequently are adjustments made? Well, it's a super short term trade, right? Um, so um, I like to keep them limited to three adjustments. Every once in a while, the market's moving crazy and you, those three adjustments come on the same day. Most of the time that's not common, um, but I like to look at by the time the third adjustment comes around, I'm looking at it going, do I really wanna, is the straight trade still viable or do I wanna just cut and run here? Um, or if it is still viable, I'll put on the third adjustment. And usually that's about it. There's, I think there's been a couple times where I've done a fourth one, but that's because there's so much profit already built into the trade. And I'm just kind of like, oh, let's see if I can keep this thing so flat that I can just keep collecting theta, but it's pretty rare, but I like to keep it to three. Um, let's see. Do you think this strategy is a bit more conservative than the boxcar drawdown? Um, well, it's positive Vegas, so it kind of helps on a downside move. Um, and it can be because uh, the T plus zero line tends to tends to most of the time be a little flatter in a lot of the, than a lot of the boxcar trades. It, it depends. Um, but I have a, a max. I don't want to go over five percent drawdown on these. So that's like my max loss, and I, I, I look out for that. Uh, obviously, if the market's kind of bouncing up and down, I'll give it a little bit of wiggle room, but. Um, I, I do like to keep it uh, under 5%, 5%, no more than 5% drawdown. Uh, do you wait just before the market closed to make an adjustment? No, but I have found that in a lot of cases, and this is what we're, one of the things we'll talk about, this can be a trade where it's like, you know what, I'm gonna trade this um, uh, the last hour of the day only or something like that. Like I'm only gonna do my adjustments the last hour of the day or the first hour and the last hour. Um, I like I like that kind of thing because the in-between things can be just kind of whatever doing their thing um, and it's not ne as necessary to, you don't want to over adjust, right? Um, so usually um, in a lot of a lot of times you can trade this kind of strategy where you you put it on, maybe you put it on in the morning or maybe you put it on in the afternoon and then you only look at it once a day. So this can be a strategy where you do that and it's either going to you know work out or it's not going to work out. So it's definitely something uh, we can go we can go over during the service as well, um, as part of okay well, because um, that kind of keeps you know obviously adjustments down to a minimum, especially when we get a lot of times the market will fade the move that it made all day, and that happens a lot. So, 
Steve's saying the boxcar trading tended to have the majority of risk to the downside with the, with the PCS, especially if you don't use them. Yeah. So I think that, um, yeah, and um, there is, a you know, credit spreads um, will add the risk to the downside, but because positive Vega trade, you've got that kind of balancing out your downside risk on this trade. Um, and um, uh, so that helps this this one. It, it, I think the greater risk, and you won't have a big loss if it happens, the greater risk is if you have a huge gap up or something, I would imagine would be probably a greater risk. But even then, you know, you don't expect to have, you know, extremely large drawdowns if that happens, you know. Um, because you have, uh, you don't have as much, um, uh, you know, you just don't have a, a lot of skin in the game. And even if the market moves up a lot or gaps up a lot, um, it's pretty flat going, going to the upside. There's less, there's less risk to the upside. So it kind of flattens out. So uh, it should keep, that keeps the, the, um, uh, keeps the possibility of a large gap move up from giving a big drawdown either. So it kind of keeps things safe. Um, with the AIC, the tended to react differently with the trade in the rut versus the box car in the uh, I saw with the AIC how it tended to react differently with the trade in the rut versus the, yeah, the AIC is totally different um, than the box car. Um, even if the AIC was traded in the SPX, it's, it's just a different trade. It's just longer term. You have more room for the adjustments to kind of, it's just smoother. It doesn't have as much, um, it has a lot more room to wiggle and, um, you know, really flat compared to the boxcar, the AIC. So they're not really a great comparison. Uh, Richard, you must have come in late. The time zone strategy uh, like I mentioned earlier, is a short-term weekly strategy. It's main, you know, it's supposed to be, you know, you can do it on a weekly basis, but it's basically designed to create, uh, you know, steady, consistent profits while being in the market as little as possible. It's a positive Vega trade. You probably want to rewatch this. Um, uh, it's also um, a very short-term trade. It's usually in the trade for more than, uh, five, no more than five days. So uh, profits usually come in pretty quickly. So if you came in late, you probably want to rewatch this. I don't want to, obviously, I'm not going to go through the whole thing again, but um, yeah, definitely, you know, rewatch this. I think because the, uh, serv the, the service isn't starting until next Thursday, so you got time to, you know, sign up um, to take advantage of the sale or whatever. And um, we'll start the first meeting on Thursday. Um, and I'm going to make sure you guys feel comfortable before we start the first trade. Um, which will either be that Friday or the following Friday, or the further, first live one. We'll do a we'll do one uh, the very first week, um, if it's even if it's paper. But we'll do it. The first live one will probably be the following week, um, just to make sure you guys kind of get settled in and under, you know know what, what's coming and stuff. Um, but I might see a good opportunity to put one on the following morning. So we'll see. Usually, I like to do it like the first week of the of the month. Um, and the 28th doesn't fall on that. That's the last week of the month. So last Friday of the month. So I'll probably do it the first week of the following month. Uh, no. So the first, it's not 297 a month. It's just 297. It's a one price deal. We usually charge like 399 to 499 for these types of things, not per month, just a, as a, as a one-time thing. And we're just, you know, you know, chopping off a hundred bucks to kind of keep it the same price as we did AIC. So it's a limited time. It's not per month. It's just a one time. Um, uh, it'll, it'll go from the 27th to July, uh, July 9th. So it'll end after the first week of July or first or second week of July, July 9th. Um, and it'll just be a one-time charge. So that's more than a month. Um, to start the trade, are you going to put limit price orders are going to hit the mid price? Um, to start the trade, yeah, I always do limit orders. I, I never do market orders to start the trade. So I'm gonna send out um, very similar to the way I did the box car, the way I did the AIC was very detailed of you know what the market looks like right now, what the two spreads are, what the current mid prices are at that particular time, what to you know give up, that kind of thing. Any chance when seven nine comes up that you might consider extending? Uh, yeah. Um, I did consider, I almost was going to um, extend the AIC. I was just like, 
going back and forth on that to do like another three months, but every, not everybody, I shouldn't say that. A lot of people really wanted to see the time zone. And I'm like, well, I can't, I don't have time to do both. So I thought, well, let me stop the AIC. Everybody's kind of got a good feel for it. We'll do the time zone. And then we can go, you know, kind of maybe go back and forth, that kind of thing. But I might, but because this is a short term one, maybe I'll do this one twice in a row and then I'll go back to the AIC, that kind of thing. So we'll see how, how this one ends up. Um, but I definitely, uh, you know, want to make sure that we have enough time to cover lots of different things so that you really understand um, how the trade works and, and get a good feel for, you know, lots of um, things that are going on in the current market, because that's, you know, that's the market we're in. So I want you to see trades working in the current market, which is what we plan. Um, yeah, you can use the TOS platform to do, I'm going to, I always use, I always show these things in one, but, but um, I think the Thinkorswim platform with its analysis screens are great. Um, they, you know, to, to uh, kind of uh, follow along with that. All right. Any other questions, you guys? Tom, did you see anything else? Um, I don't know if you're still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, there's some um, stuff in the quite Q and A. Oh, is there? I didn't check that. Let's see. Oh, it'll be. Oh, never mind. There, there's nothing new in there. Yeah, it looks like all the same questions in the chat. Yep. Yeah. We've had a few people order already, so thank you. And and like you said, oh, it's starting you. um in another what nine days or so. Yeah, so it's starting on the 27th, which is next Thursday. And I believe what I plan on doing is most likely I will have the weekly meetings on Thursdays. I know usually with the boxcar and the AIC, it was Mondays and Tuesdays, but because of the way this trade, because I want to, I want to talk about, you know, trades every week and kind of step through how they performed and they're normally entered on a Friday. I want to do these weekly meetings on Thursday so we can really, you know, uh, go through all of those steps in a weekly meeting every week. Right. Um, so that, you know, it's consistently, you know, just it flows through instead of chopping it up. If I did it on a Monday and, um, you know, the trade might still be on, I want to be able to talk about these, you know, pretty much through the life of the trade. So I figured if I do a weekly meeting every Thursday after the market, we'll get a better feel for that flow. Um, all right. I think that's it. I think that's it. So good. So, um, yeah. And if you guys think of any other questions, you know, you can feel free to email me or Tom, um, Amy at aeromere.com or Tom at aeromere.com. Um, and- uh, Let's put them in the chat the for link you. To the, uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, panelists and attendees. That's the link There's that the people link need. To, oh, you did it already. Okay, thanks. Tom. Mine's clickable though. <laughs> Yours is clickable. Right, I didn't make mine clickable. I forgot to do that. Gotta okay. put the HTTPS in there. <laughs> for, well, that's why you're the you're the the wizard with the web stuff. Well, I've been doing it a while, so. Yep. All right. Cool. Well, I think that's it. I don't see any other questions coming through. Um, yeah, I hope you guys. You know, a lot of people have asked for it, so that's why I'm doing it. So hopefully, I'll see a lot of uh, this. You know, new faces and a lot of uh, faces that I saw in some of the other services. Um, I think you guys will like this one, especially if you like those short term trades. Um, it's 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 super fun it's easy i like easy and i imagine like for the archives after it ends what we did with aic's we same left it thing. open for a few months we'll do the same thing here yeah exactly so we'll extend the um the archive um i might i may extend it like you said uh, somebody asked me that i might extend it like another month or two or something like that afterwards if i want to double up on this one um uh um and even if i didn't the archives are still going to be there for a while after, and then maybe I'll jump back to the AIC and then jump back to the time. So we'll see. Uh, let's see how it goes. Um, let's see how you guys like it. And that's probably going to be the best way for me to tell what, whatever you guys want. Right. Right. <laughs> Gotta give them what they want. So. That's All right. Time. Well, thank you, right. Amy. Really appreciate thanks, it. Um, all right. Thanks everybody for watching. All right. We'll night. see you. Okay. Bye. -bye. Bye.